Hello, people. Welcome to Coffee Talk, where... Oh, welcome to Coffee Talk. Hello, people. Welcome to Coffee Talk with Father Brad and... <laughs> Hello, people. Welcome to Coffee Talk with Father Brad, which we drink coffee. Talk about Jesus. Okay, today we're talking about faith in science. One of the things that I like to do as a priest is meet with confirmation candidates, those to be confirmed. I just talk about faith, talk about their lives, their futures, their plans, and sometimes their doubts. And one of the major doubts that high schoolers have in the confirmation process that I've heard is that they think there's a dichotomy or a battle between faith on one hand and reason on the other. They might say something like this. You know, when I was younger, I believed in the stories in the Bible. I believed in God. I believed in faith. And then as I grew up, I learned science. I learned empirical data. And so I choose that. Now, this is all built on the assumption that reason is against faith and that faith is against reason. I claim that that's a false dichotomy, that it's not true, that one doesn't have to choose between faith and reason, and that they actually aid each other and help each other. So reason number one, why you don't have to choose between faith and reason, the church's stance on evolution. The Bible is not a science textbook. In fact, it's a love letter. If you think about it, if you're writing a love letter to your girlfriend, say, if you wrote it like a science textbook, your eyes are round orbs in which light enters and refracts. Okay, that's not very romantic. Instead, you use symbolic language, you use poetic language to express a deep truth of love. You say your eyes are like oceans in which I, I stare into the, the depths of the sea or something. I don't know, that's kind of cheesy. But you get my point. The truth of a love poem or a love letter is deep and true, even though it might not be scientifically accurate. So the Bible is not a science textbook and it was never written to be a science textbook. In fact, a guy named Galileo once said this, the Bible shows the way to go to heaven, not the way the heavens go. You can believe in evolution and still be a Catholic. Many popes have written about it. Many theologians have accepted uh, the study of evolution and the study of scripture and the belief in God. Because evolution ultimately doesn't reject God as a creator. It doesn't say how matter came to exist at all. It just says how it evolves. Number two, there's a guy named George Lamatra. L-E-M-A-I-T-R-A. -E he was a Jesuit priest. He said mass, prayed the creed, prayed the rosary, heard confessions, did everything a normal priest does. I do all those things. But he also did something very interesting. He did astrophysics. Yeah, the physics of the stars. And he was the first person to come up with the Big Bang Theory. Bang! Not the television show. Like the theory of everything coming from a point of singularity and spreading out. Basically the center of our understanding of the universe right now. The guy who came up with it is a Catholic priest. He didn't think faith and science contradicted. Number three, a guy named Blessed Nicholas Steno. Again, he was also a priest, but he was a bishop, and he's a blessed. He's on the way to becoming a saint. He was also the father of modern geology. The plates and the Earth's crust has actually led the way to our understanding of the Earth being more than 6,000 years old. Nicholas Steno did not think that faith contradicted reason. So finally, what about all these seeming contradictions in scriptures, these times when it seems like scripture is saying one thing about nature and then we come to find out that's not the case. St. Augustine had an interesting way of viewing this and I'll quote him. He said, if we're perplexed by any apparent contradiction in scripture, it is not allowable to say the author of this book is mistaken, but either the manuscript is faulty or the translation is wrong or you have not understood. 
Right? He knew that scripture, God's word, God's revelation cannot contradict the revelation of nature, what we find in nature. If it is true in nature, then it's true about God. You do not have to choose between faith on one hand and science on the other. In fact, the best scientists and the holiest saints didn't choose either. <laughs>